Video games foster the mindset that allows creativity to grow. Nolan Bushnell. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. For the purpose of this episode, we are going to talk about video games with story. This does not include Minesweeper or Solitaire, because you don't really follow a story with those. We are talking about writing for video games that include some kind of narrative. Which means we are excluding pretty much every game that I play. Yep. You play a lot of puzzle games. Puzzle games are fun, but they're not narrative. I'm sure there are a lot of other fantastic podcasts about that, but we're storytellers and video games have a unique element in that the players get to be the main character. They get to be the hero in the story that you are telling. Video games are probably the most interactive form of art and writing. Because not only is the person experiencing the story, they're kind of living it through how they choose to go about the game. So video games that come to mind are games like Final Fantasy, The Legend of Zelda, even some of your MMOs like Destiny and World of Warcraft have story to them. Guild Wars is one that I did play back when Guild Wars was a thing. And it had a story. And of course, we can't exclude tabletop RPGs. Dungeons and Dragons. We've talked about that one a lot because we use Dungeons and Dragons to help us write actual stories. There are people who make a living designing and building campaigns for Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a little envious. That sounds like a lot of fun. (laughs) Because that's their job. They get to write story for a game. If you look at the titles on any video game when you finish it, There are a lot of people that contribute to creating the story. Writing for video games, though, is unique. You're not writing a full narrative with description and dialogue. You are writing something that the user, that the gamer, can change. You're giving them options. When we talk about story arc and character arc, there's an internal battle that is fought and an external battle. And those two interact very closely in a novel to make up this story front to back. In the case of a video game, you only have the external story. And your players may or may not make an internal story for themselves. A really good example of a video game where the choices of the player affect the actual game itself is Fable. Where in Fable, they have a good and evil system. If your character keeps making evil choices, then the people within the towns and villages will start to act as if you are evil. They will run away screaming. They will try to fight you because they see you as a demon. So in that way, your audience directly contributes to how the story forms. So part of having your players being so invested in the story helped develop this culture where not only are players invested, but there has become an audience for watching people play video games. You have Twitch, you have online streaming, you have esports. Another thing that makes video games especially unique is there is no scene and sequel. Those moments in storytelling where you have a lot of action and then you have the introspection about the action. That sort of inhale and exhale that both need to happen in order to maintain the pace of a good story. You don't really have an exhale. Within video games, people can usually hit pause unless it's something like an MMO. Or there will be cutscenes where there is a little bit more narrative to how it's played and it's played out kind of like a movie. But if you're playing something like an MMO, there's just kind of always something to do. There's a side quest to do. Therefore, one of the things that makes video games the most unique is they're really easy to binge. There's always something more to do, something more to invest your time in. Not just your primary quest, but all of those side quests mean that you could log a thousand hours on this particular game and still not run out of action. That makes it very difficult for you as a storyteller to design that. 
but it is something that people both love and hate about video games. So, for example, Breath of the Wild, I finished the storyline, but then I continued playing because there were side quests I hadn't done. There were shrines I hadn't found. There were seeds I hadn't collected. There's a lot, but I tried to finish everything. And you'll have gamers who do that because they experience it for the game, which includes the story, but is not solely the story. A lot of video games, especially back in the day, were marketed toward young adult males and people who are in college, just getting out of college that age range, but almost all guys. Which, thank goodness, a lot of video games are getting better about the women not having the skankiest clothing and the worst armor. So yes, you have a lot of targeting towards the new adult males. It's getting better. You're starting to get a lot of more acceptance of female gamers. And some games are targeted more towards women. A lot of your simulation type games, Sims, for example. Did you know there is a simulation game for mowing your lawn? Oh, I just, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. And of course, there are a handful of games that you can get for consoles, especially the non-MMO stuff that's targeted toward kids. Sometimes it'll be educational. It'll be Mickey Mouse going through his numbers and you have to guess which number comes next. That kind of thing so that they're selling the parents on the kids playing video games. So with children's games, there is a little bit of a challenge because it is difficult to have a complex story but you can still have a story. For example, Super Mario Brothers. The story was Mario going to save Princess Peach after she had gotten kidnapped by Bowser. I'm really showing my nerd. <laughs> Some of the advantages of having video games to tell a story is that you can also teach skills. Not always the counting to five and which car is blue and all of that for children, but things like cooperation. In you be the healer, I'm going to do DPS, he's going to be the tank. And puzzle solving, like in Portal. With writing for video games, you have a lot of opportunity to write different settings. There are fantasy video games, there's sci-fi video games, there are simulation video games. All sorts of different settings that you get to world build and create magic systems and do all of that favorite part of narrative writing and then see it play out in an interactive way. One of the things that is both an advantage and a disadvantage is that the players will create a culture of their own. Back in my day, Guild Wars players and World of Warcraft players were completely different cultures. Oh yeah. That can be an advantage because you start having people bonding with each other outside of just engaging in your story. But that can also be a disadvantage because I didn't like World of Warcraft players. I was a Guild Wars player, so you stay over on that side of the table. One difficulty with writing for a video game is that your main character kind of needs to be a little bit of an everyman because your main character is played by the player. The player becomes the main character. They're going to make the different choices. For example, in Fable, you had the choice to be good or be bad. And writing a story that would play out in almost a choose-your-own-adventure way based on those decisions is really difficult, especially when you have a villain of the story who, in traditional writing, is a reflection of your main character. Now, you can create NPCs, our non-player characters, to also be the main character in your story, but right near the end, they have to fail. And these NPCs end up being more like your mentor character. Another disadvantage is that this is a difficult field to break into. Unless you have a ton of money to fund and create your own game, you're not likely going to just be able to write whatever you want. You're going to be working for a company. They're going to have an idea for a video game, or you're going to have to create one and pitch it and hope they like it so that you can write it. It's really hard to break into that. 
Now, I feel like it's fairly obvious that the favorite genre for video games is adventure. That can be in a lot of different contexts, city heroes where you're the superhero or the swords and sorcery of World of Warcraft. You can have some fantasy elements because I swear I see as many elves in video games as I do in any Tolkien book. Oh, most definitely. You can also have sci-fi very strong. Instead of it being magic, it is technology. And I feel like the genre of horror really lends itself to video games because players are engaged as the character. So if something happens to the character, it's very common for them to feel like it's happening to them. This is growing even more popular with virtual reality gaming. So you have your Oculus. A lot of the games on that are horror because they're in it. Video games like Amnesia, where it's so based on what you're hearing as well as what you're seeing, VR makes that such an immersive experience. All that to say, there are so many stories to tell, especially with video games. So if you want to write for video games, I would definitely advise you to read and write a bunch of novels so you understand the story structure, you understand how to create an interesting setting and adventure, and also play a whole bunch of video games. See what you enjoy about those experiences, the creepy whispering behind you in the VR or whatever it is, and integrate that into your story. Integrate it into your writing by writing selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.